everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I've got three sweater up cycles that I'm planning and normally I just do everything at my regular sewing machine, but today I'm hardly gonna use the sewing machine at all. I'm gonna do all three in kind of more crafty ways. So the first sweater that I thrifted, the colors are so pretty and I do wear a lot of gray, but this gives me that nice shot of color. I love it, but it's like ginormously long. So I wanna take about six inches out of the body there. Normally I would just cut it off, sew it back on shorter, but I actually got my dear mom to teach me how to crochet the two back together and it's really surprisingly easy. So I'm gonna do that. And the sweater dresses are big this fall. And so I found this one. And again, I know I wear too much gray, so I wanna liven it up a little bit. It has that nice seam down the front. And so I've found a nice contrasting yarn that has shades of gray in it. And I'm just gonna play around with sort of an overcast stitch on some of the dominant seams, just to sort of liven that one up. And then the last but not least is the one I'm super excited about. This one, just plain black sweater, but when I was searching for inspiration online, I came across this photo and I just fell in love with that huge white flower, but I didn't want to order that one because I don't want to participate in fast fashion. I don't want to go there. And if I did order it, I could almost guarantee you that I would be really disappointed in the quality. So I'm gonna DIY it. So I was thinking how maybe I find another sweater, a white sweater to cut out a flower and applique it on. And then I thought, nope, let's stay in the crafty vein. And I bought some white roving and some needle felting needles. And I've done a little bit of needle felting. It's really fun. It's super like relaxing. And um, so I'm gonna try my hand at needle felting that big giant flower on. So if that all sounds good to you, then let's get busy. Okay, so isn't this cute? I just love this one. I was really drawn to it in the thrift store. I think it was like $8, maybe less, I don't know. But the length is really awkward. I think it's a great length if you wanna wear it over tights and things like that, but I wanna wear it with my gray pleated skirt, which I think would be a really cute look. So I've got my scrap of soap and I'm just gonna mark where I want the ribbing to connect to the sweater. I think about like that, like just with a, about an inch or inch and a half below the colored stripe. I'll just put a wax mark where I want the ribbing to connect. And I think that'll make a nice length with my skirt. So I'm gonna kind of take that off and make two cuts and then join them back together using the most basic crochet stitch because that's all I know how to do. <laughs> okay, so I could not make a mark with my soap. All I could do is scuff it up, but that's okay because I can just see the lines in the knit and I'm just gonna cut right along there, trying not to lose my way. And I'm just going through one layer at a time here just to be cautious. Okay, so that looks super short. <laughs> But I think once I get that ribbing back on, it'll be good, right? That is where I marked it, but boy, boy, that looks super cropped. So now I wanna cut about half an inch or so above the top of the ribbing. I think I'm going a full inch here because I just got scared. Okay, so I'll definitely keep this. Maybe I'll make some kind of fun ear warmer. When I had this on, I thought it would be actually nicer if the ribbing was about two inches shorter just to bring it in more. If I'm gonna take off those two inches, I personally don't know any other way other than cutting and sewing for a vertical seam like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I am going to my machine for a second. Flip these to be right side together. That seems okay though. Okay, so I've shown this trick loads of times before of starting at the finished edge so that I don't have serger tails that are gonna bother me. So I'm starting at that finished edge. And just sort of a couple stitches, lift up, bring my chain forward right underneath the presser foot and then serge over that chain. And then you get that nice finished edge right at the bottom of the ribbing. That will be okay. So now I think I wanna flip everything inside out. This sweater is so soft and lovely. I can't wait to wear this one. So now I need yarn, right? From the piece that I've cut off, now I want to pull off yarn that I can use to crochet it back. So I'm gonna to try to get a long piece. There's a good long piece. 
Okay, well, this is long enough to get me started. Alrighty, and now this is the back, this is the front. I need to find that little insignia here. I want that going right side together with the front, and the whole ribbing goes inside with the finished edge going in first, and the raw edge is all coming together. And then I'm going to clip side seam to side seam, and side seam to side seam, and then find centers clip there and center front and I might put one clip in between each of those as well so I tied a slip knot just like this but then I found that the easiest way was to put the hook through both layers first about half an inch from the edge and then get the knot onto the hook and pull it through both layers okay <gasps> I think that's working I think that's going to make sense okay so that is the deal stick your hook through wrap your yarn around pull the yarn through and then pull your new loop through the one that was already on your needle stick that through this is working and then i can start to see that chain forming on this side can you see that chain forming that's exactly like when I undo a sweater, I look for that chain. So my only worry is that this is all rough and raggedy. I can just serge that edge after I've crochet, crocheted it all together nicely. I still think it'll look better than just sewing and serging, and it'll still be finished nicely. And how is that looking? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. My mom would laugh at my technique right now. Letting go of the hook each time. <laughs> That's very poor form. This might be a time where somebody's going to tell me to stay in my lane and just do what I know, which is sewing, not crochet. And you know what? Fair point. <laughs> Perhaps I should. But I like learning new things and trying new things. And so I'm going to continue on in probably a comfy chair and watch some TV that is not about war. And then I'll show you the end. I think I'm actually super excited about that. Okay, I'll show you later. So I finished crocheting the ribbing back on and I think it's nicer than a sewn seam with serging. It's just laying flatter and thinner. So I do like it, but it took obviously way longer than just sewing it. But now on the inside, I still have these rough edges. So I think I'm going to serge them still, but I'll serge them separately so I can press it open and flat. It just sits so nice when it's open. If I did this again, I would serge the bottom edges first and then crochet them together. I think that's the best of both worlds. Okay, that gives a lovely finish. Good, good. And then I'm confident on the inside, looks good on the outside. Excellent. Okay, this one is done, nice. And it's just perfect length. And I really do prefer this method of reattaching the ribbing. I think next time, yep, I'll just serge both pieces separately and then crochet them together. It's a nice smooth seam. It's not chunky and wiggly that sometimes can happen when you sew it back on. It just looks kind of natural, like it was meant to be like that, which is the whole point, right? So this one is definitely a win. I think I'm set to go out for the day in this outfit. So now let's move on to that sweater dress. Alrighty, so as far as sweater dresses go, I think this is kind of a flattering one. I often find them very unflattering, but I think this one is quite pretty. I like the mock turtleneck. I love this seam going down the center front just to give a long line. And I really like the sleeves. A little bit of fullness there is quite pretty, I think. But it is probably just too gray. So with this yarn kind of uh, like looping around that center seam and maybe on the raglan seam. Can you see that raglan sleeve there? I might work some of the yarn into that as well. The belt I'm not too sure about. Do I just get rid of the belt? Wear a different belt? Crochet a belt? I don't really know yet. So that'll just be a styling thing I'll play with at the end. 
but I think the dress itself has a lot of potential. Do you think? Hope you agree. Okay, so for the sweater dress, I've got this like variegated yarn. It's really thick and it has lighter and darker shades of gray going through. So I know it's more gray. I did actually play around with different yarns with this, different colors, and anything that was like a color just looked funny. It just didn't vibe with this. And this is like very, very thick. So I might struggle to get it through my darning needle. That's my mom's trick is to put a thread. I've just got a regular sewing thread wrapped around that big yarn. Okay, and then if I get the two ends of the sewing thread through the needle, perhaps I'll be able to pull the yarn through that way. It's the same concept as like a needle threader with the little wire that you pass through first, but this yarn is, oh, here it goes. There we go, okay. Yay for the thread trick, okay. Good. Knitters maybe don't like that I'm starting with a knot, but I'm going to start with a knot. And I'm going to hide that knot on the inside. I don't want that knot right at the top. So can I start a bit down and then go up and then start again and go down to make it look like it's all in one? I don't know. So my knot is hidden about four or five inches down. Oh my goodness, it's hard even to pull this through the knit. Whew. Okay, so that looks like a nice size stitch. So yeah, that's exactly a centimeter. I'm going to mark the bottom of my finger every centimeter like that. And then if I'm coming out here, I know I want to go in there. And it is surprisingly hard to tug through. I'm also going to want to have like the same kind of tightness on my stitch. Oh, that does look kind of cute the way. Okay, marks on my finger are definitely helpful. Okay, I just want to get my stitches all about the same kind of tightness. I think I was getting looser. So now with my thread going through some of the stitches on the inside of the neckline, now I can pull it through and secure it down here. And even if that does flip over and show, it looks kind of nice. I'm not bothered by that. So if I put the folded part of my thread through first, then stick my yarn through that loop of thread, and then I should be able to pull that through more easily. Oh yeah, that's easier. So now from here down, I want to make it look like that's all one continuous thing, like there's no break there. So now I'm going down. So you get the idea. I'm going to do that all the way down the center front and on the two raglan seams and see how I like it. I think that looks quite nice. Okay, comfy chair time. I'll be back in a bit. So I did end up pulling out that first bit and changing to one and a half centimeters or about five eighths of an inch. And that seems to be the sweet spot. So I did that whole center front seam, the two raglan seams in the front, and the two raglan seams in the back too. And I think it looks really dynamite. At the one centimeter mark, it was just a bit too tight and it would have taken one and a half times as long. So the last thing I'll do, I think I'm just gonna snip off these belt loops because I don't really need them. If I want to wear a belt with a dress, I can still wear the, a belt without the belt loops. I think it's really just for hanging in the store. And so I don't really need these. So this one is finished. And don't you think that just adds a beautiful flair to this dress? It was just so plain and drab. And now I think it's really gorgeous. It feels amazing. A sweater dress, you can't get cozier than that. But I think it just has a lot more style now than it did before. So I'm excited about this one. Let's move on to that final one with the needle felting. I think Talk about adding a bit of flair. I think that one's gonna be really special. So as far as black turtlenecks go, this is kind of a nice one. Like, I don't hate this sweater or anything, but I really love the one with the big white flower. So this is quite a high turtleneck. I'm gonna reduce it to just be either a crew neck or kind of the mock turtleneck, which is like in the inspiration photo. Uh, but then this little bit of turtleneck is what I'm gonna be able to use to flare the sleeves like in the picture. I love those sleeves. I think that's so pretty. And then it's got these slits at the side that I think I'll close up and maybe make the whole body narrower. So I think I should probably do the flower first just to make sure I love it and that it's this whole needle felting thing is gonna work for this, right? If I don't really love the look of the flower, I'm gonna be super unmotivated to finish the sweater. So let's start with the flower. That's the fun part anyway. So I'm looking at my inspiration picture on my laptop here, and then I kind of want to duplicate or emulate that flower on my sweater here. So 
Luckily, the soap shows up beautifully on this sweater, so I'm kind of plotting out the top and the bottom of this flower. The big center of the circle, I have to make sure, is below the bust point, because that would not be a great look. So I want the center of the flower below that, so the flower has to come down onto the ribbing. Something like that could be amazing. I'm gonna pop this over my head and make sure I'm happy with that placement. And yes, I love it already. I think that looks great. So now needle felting. So this is the roving I bought online in the picture on Amazon. I thought it was gonna arrive and be about the size of a, of a loaf of bread. And then it showed up and it's more like a dinner roll, but I think it's pretty densely packed in there. It seems like there's quite a lot of roving here, so it should be fine for my flower. And then a package of felting needles. If you've never done needle felting before, it is pretty nice. The needle has tiny little barbs on it and the wool has scales on it, just like if you've ever seen a magnified strand of hair, those little scales. And so the barbs push those little scales into the fabric and it just becomes one. I don't want it to become one with the back though. So I saved this bit of foam packaging from something else that arrived from Amazon and I'm putting that in between the layers. And then I think I'll just start with it quite light. I don't know. I think if I do the outline and then fill it in maybe. All you do once you get your roving in place is just tap, 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 tap. That is the idea. I'm just gonna keep filling in a little bit here and there, but you can see that it is quite addicting and it goes pretty quickly. I have to say this is way faster than either of the other two projects. I just need to make sure it doesn't end up looking like a Halloween sweater. <laughs> I could put a jack-o'-lantern right in the middle of here. I don't think it would feel Halloween-ish if it wasn't mid-October. So I'll keep filling in and I'll keep smoothing it out. Anywhere that it's like lifting up, I'll just tap it in until it's all pretty smooth and flat and really attached. You can see on the back, isn't that amazing? It comes right through like that. It, that's every poke. That's pretty cool. I'll keep going at this and then I'll show you in a little bit. So inside it has all of these little tufts now. And so to make it more secure, I'm gonna go over it all from the inside. And then I'm gonna do a whole other layer. It just looks still a bit cobwebby. And I don't know if it's just because Halloween is coming up, but I really don't want it to look like cobwebs. So a whole other layer to just thicken it up. Before I get into fitting this sweater nicely, the last thing I'll do is I was thinking about this void in the center, which is true to the inspo shot, but it's bothering me a little bit. And I'm wondering about taking little balls of the roving and doing a few little dots in the center of the flower. If I did five or six little dots in the middle, I think I would like that better. So I'm gonna keep working on that. And when I said this was going faster, no, this is just as time consuming as the other two projects. I've spent more time in front of the TV today than ever in my life, I think. So for each of the little dots, I kind of just poke them a few times just on the foam and then holding them down with a pin, then I poked and poked until they were more or less firmly attached. Now the base sweater is not wool, it's a synthetic, but with needle felting, you can still get the wool roving to bind. You can even do this on denim, any kind of fabric really. It maybe works best when you're going wool onto wool, but you can make it work on any fabric and you can kind of move the roving around to get it to lay exactly how you want it. Okay, I feel like I could keep going at that for another year, but I'm gonna have to move on. That is going to be good enough. Maybe not. It's actually difficult to get yourself to stop. Okay, I think that is gonna have to do. So let's get into fitting this sweater. 
I'm going to be trying to find some of that rib to put into the sleeve because I want to flare the sleeve out like in the inspo picture. I'm going to come in two inches off the side. So there's just a tiny bit there and the sleeve is already really skinny. So I'm going to just curve that around. The ribbing is in two. There's a slit here, but I might try to make good use of that finished edge of the ribbing. The ribbing I'm getting there is five and a half inches long. So if I could get another five and a half inches up here, that would be probably helpful. But I probably want seam allowance on it. So I better go six here. That leaves me three. So that would give me an inch and a half on my mock turtle, which would be more of a crew neck than a mock turtle. So I'm going to wait on that. I'm going to do the sides and see if these little bits of ribbing are enough in the sleeve. And if it's enough, then I don't have to worry about saving any ribbing off the neckline. So I think I'll just cut and then serge. And then I'll use the piece that I cut off to make sure I've got the same curve on the other side. And even though this is a thick knit, I'm going to try it just straight on my serger. I'm going to get my edges right under, snug it against the cutting blade and the needles. Just serge like two or three stitches. And leave my needles down, lift my presser foot up, bring that tail underneath, and then serge right over that tail. And the serger is handling this thick wool just fine, no problems at all. Okay, I'll check the fit of that and then look at the sleeves. The fit is nice. The body, I'm happy with all that. And I want the sleeve to flare out and this is all I have to work with. So that's what I just chopped off the side seam. I'm going to use that slit as part of the way the sleeve is going to look flared. So this edge is going to be under here and basically I'm going to make a 10 inch tall wedge out of this and surge it into the opening of this. I think that will actually work. First thing I need to do is open up that bit of the sleeve. So you know what that means. I have to find the chain, which I cannot even see on this black. I seriously cannot even see a thing. Okay, so since I cannot see the chain, I'm just going to look in the seam here and then I will see stitches going across. It's clearly the stitch that is holding the seam together. It's not just in the knit itself. So I'm going to start there. Good. Make myself a hole and see if that leads me to any discoveries of the chain. No. Okay. No problem. Ooh, I kind of like that. Ooh, that's exciting. I made a bit of an opening just by pushing my seam ripper gently in that seam. I am not going to recommend that though. Okay. Phew. Same on the other sleeve. If you put the red ball down, you have less of a chance of gouging your fabric. And it's still a little scary. Okay, so on these two, like the sections that I cut off the side, I've just drawn a line about 10 and a half inches up from the maximum width that I have up to that 10 and a half inch point. And I'm just going to cut. Then the idea is that I'll just surge that into the sleeve and hopefully that looks beautiful. I'll surge up one side of this wedge and then up the other side. And hopefully that gives me a beautiful sleeve and then I won't need anything off the collar. Same way again, starting at that finished edge. If you don't have a serger, I'm sure you could just sew this and then zigzag your edges, no problem. Same thing on the other side of that sleeve, and then the same thing on the other sleeve entirely. Maybe I'll try it on though before I do the second sleeve. Okay, the sleeves look pretty good, but this slit on the sleeve is just twice as long as I need. So I'm going to close it up and just leave maybe two and a half inches open. All that means is I'll be just using the regular sewing machine to sew close to that finished edge. Regular needle, regular straight stitch. And of course, same on the other sleeve. Okay, now it's just the neck and then this one is done. I think for a mock turtleneck, I'm going to want two inches, but it's going to fold. So four inches, maybe a little bit of seam allowance, four and a quarter. From that seam, I'm using a bit of Taylor's wax, but a scrap of soap works just as well. And you know what would have been easier is measuring from the finished edge. Yes, that would have been so much easier. As long as that finished edge is lined up, I can just cut right through there. 
Oh, Catherine, sometimes you're such a genius. Okay, now I'm just gonna serge that, fold it down, stitch it down, and we're done. Okay, I'm done with the serge. We're looking pretty good here. So now I'm gonna bring that serged edge down to the original seam line, just like that should be fine. I guess I better get rid of these tags. So I wanna bring this down, keeping the ribs in line. I don't wanna get into any twisting. So with the ribs just in line with themselves, then I can clip. And then once it's all clipped around, then I think I'm just going to, well, maybe I might zigzag those edges together. That seems like it might be a good time for a zigzag. I'll have, you know, more chances to catch the edges if I'm doing a zigzag. And then after that, I am done. And then I've got three new outfits to wear. I really love all of today's projects. I think they all just came out so nice. So I'm using a zigzag and I want to stretch it a bit as I go. Still needs to stretch over my head, so the zigzag will be good for that too. Much better than a straight stitch would be. Oh my goodness, you know what that means. It's time to style up my three new outfits. I am excited to show you the final product. Oh my goodness, saving the best for last. I love this sweater and I love this whole outfit. This skirt I literally whipped together in about 15 minutes using the A-line skirt pattern cut on the bias like I did in this video and the elastic waist that I did in this video. Super fast and just gives me a nice thing to plunk under this sweater. The easiest outfit ever and I feel like a million bucks in this one. So I know I'm gonna be wearing this one a lot and I had a blast today doing all of these different crafts. So I hope you had fun with that process. I loved it and it was great to have you along. Thank you so much for joining me today and for being around right till the end. And until next time on Catherine Sews, you take care.